Hello everyone, I'm Sergeant Major of the Army Retired Dan Daly, and welcome to this edition of Soldier Today Podcast. Soldier Today Podcast is a product of the Non-Commissioned Officer and Soldier Programs Directorate at the Association of the United States Army. Soldier Today subjects focus on those topics that are relevant and needed by our soldiers and their families, serving the regular Army, Army National Guard, and the Army Reserve. Continuing our newest discussion topic today is a subject that remains front page news on all of our minds, COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus. We are all concerned about how this pandemic is impacting Army and military operations worldwide. For all our listeners around the world, many of you and your families have questions and concerns about the coronavirus and how they will impact you in the weeks and months ahead. This hot topic has been in the news and continues to evolve, further impacting our lives. For America's Army, this subject directly impacts soldiers, leaders, and organizational operations at all levels, across all three components of the Army. Now COVID-19 has reached a point where soldiers from the Army National Guard in multiple states are being mobilized to support their state response for providing assistance. So this is a great subject to discuss, and the right leader to have this discussion with us here in our virtual studio today is our Command Sergeant Major of the Army National Guard, Command Sergeant Major John F. Sampa. John, it's great to have you on the show with us today. How are you? I'm great this morning. You know, it's another great Army day, great Army National Guard day. Many thousands of Army National Guard soldiers out there serving in their state, local communities, doing the work of the Army National Guard. It's a great day. And thank you and AUSA to uh, allow me to take part in this podcast this morning to provide information out to our Army National Guard soldiers and all soldiers of the Army itself. Well, Sergeant Major, it is our honor to have you with us today. And, you know, many of us watch TV and they see our National Guard and all of our soldiers in the background of some of the news articles that are going on. And I'll tell you, I know our listeners, as well as me, are excited to hear more from you today about what our National Guard soldiers are doing throughout our states. So if you don't mind, Sergeant Major, we'll jump right into the questions. I thought today we'd start with a little discussion about the impact of COVID-19 on our society and the focus of the Army National Guard to help those in states that are in need. The Army National Guard has a unique role in assisting state and local agencies in a time of national emergency. What is the Guard doing in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, Sergeant Major? Since the start of this COVID-19, the Guard has been involved. And so currently the Army National Guard responds to many areas in response to COVID-19. The Army National Guard response is unique to each particular state's response because each state is different. And so that response is different for that state because uh, each state is affected differently by the COVID-19. So the roles and responsibilities for the Army National Guard is different, but there are over 16,000 Army National Guard soldiers responding to the COVID-19 as of today. And the COVID mission for the Army National Guard is to support a variety of things, but some of the most common tasks that the Army National Guard is doing right now is assisting with or supporting with drive-through testing sites, facilities, logistics, ground transportation, there are planners, there's LNOs at different locations, FEMA locations, the state operation centers, stuff like that. In some states, you've got Army National Guard soldiers doing traffic control checkpoints. And of course, our biggest thing, what we always do, any kind of response to the state is the humanitarian aid or support for that particular community as well, too. So again, the Army National Guard soldiers are out there doing a variety of things, but a lot of that is tailored to what their state have them doing. The Army National Guard, again, you know, remains on duty to their respective state as long as their service is needed or deemed by the governor and the local leaders. Well, that's great. And uh, we appreciate their service out there, Sergeant Major, because they are on the front lines of an invisible enemy. So let's change the focus of our discussion for strategic to operational. The Army National Guard is a global force with units and individual soldiers deploying all around the world. COVID-19 has had a large impact on individual and organizational training in the United States and preparing and conducting overseas deployment training. How's the Army National Guard adjusting to that? The Army National Guard is doing a lot of adjustments. And as you know, the Army National Guard has two missions. They have their homeland mission, homeland response mission, which they're doing now with the COVID-19. And they also have the national mission to fight our nation wars. Just like all other DOD services, the Army National Guard is under the no movement restriction as well that began March 16th and is scheduled to expire on May 11th. But that date, you know, is really based on the health risk to our nation in respect to COVID-19, which it could possibly be extended, but we all hope not. 
So with that said, is that we still have units deployed abroad, Oconus, in support of our nation wars, and then we have soldiers here on the homeland response. And so as a result, thousands of Armed National Guard soldiers and unit training events are, were affected by the no movement order and the social distancing criteria. So the Army National Guard is mitigating those effects by postponing or rescheduling individual collective training events to a later date if possible. Those who are being scheduled to MOB, that MOB is being evaluated, but those soldiers still going to MOB to that MOB site. But with the no movement order, it has caused some things on the calendar to be readjusted. So our senior leaders are in the process of doing all that. And so, again, the Army National Guard is mitigating those effects by postponing and rescheduling those individual collective training events to a later date and rescheduling soldiers for later PME and folks on school dates as well. Now, each state adjutant general has authority to determine what date those Army National Guard units will conduct their drill or training weekend during the no movement restriction in the COVID-19 response. So I recommend to each Army National Guard soldier to stay in close contact with their unit leaders for each day and when those training events are going to take place and, and all of that. Because as you know, the Army National Guard soldier has a civilian life, civilian career. And so all of that changes, all that has to be re-coordinated with their civilian employers and schools and all that kind of stuff. So I say again, you know, each day, because things are continually changing, they must stay in close contact with their units because the units are evaluated on a day-to-day basis based on this whole COVID-19 response of how we're going to get after that planned training or that was planned that was either canceled or postponed or rescheduled for another day. Absolutely, Sergeant Major. So we're going to have to remain flexible for at least the foreseeable future, right? Oh, most definitely. Because again, this COVID-19 response is a day-to-day thing. There is benchmarks out there and hopefully we can reach those benchmarks based on the response. But again, yes, I continue to ask these soldiers to remain flexible, remain patient, during these times. And again, a lot of our soldiers out there right now, as I say, over 16,000 are in the fight today. And so a lot of them may not even be thinking about that training or that upcoming drill, all that, because they're actually working right now in response to this. But it's when this event is stopped, then that's when all the second, third order effects are going to take place for that coordination and stuff. So we kind of have to keep in mind, you know, the way ahead for these future training events. And so that's why I say you got to continue to stay in contact with their leadership in order to find out what the latest is for the next training event that was either postponed, canceled, or going to be rescheduled. Because, you know, that training has to take place in order to maintain our readiness. So. Yeah, and you mentioned that. A lot of listeners out there do understand the different titles that our National Guard soldiers serve under. And you mentioned it, that they work for the state sometimes, and that sometimes they work for the federal government. Could you just really quickly explain for our listeners who don't understand that fully, the different titles or the two main titles that our National Guard soldiers serve under? That's correct, yeah. On a normal Army National Guard, when they're serving, they're serving under the Title 32 authority. The Title 32 authority allows the governor to be the commanding chief for his or her state. They are under the guidance of that governor. And so that governor decides how to utilize those Army National Guard soldiers in their state when it comes to homeland response. And I said earlier in the conversation today that, you know, we have a homeland response and we also have our national mission fighting our nation wars. Under that authority, we go under the Title 10 authority, which falls under the president. And so in order for each state to have a good response to their communities, it's always better to have those Army National Guard soldiers under the Title 32 because that governor knows what's best for his or her state and how to utilize those resources. And so a lot of our Army National Guard soldiers right now are under the Title 32 authority, under the command control of the governor. And again, if they do their wartime mission, then it falls under Title 10, which they fall under the command and control of the president of the United States. Oh, that's good. I appreciate you explaining that for some of our listeners out there, because it's really important because a lot of people ask questions. Why our National Guard soldiers are doing this or why they're doing this? And that just talks about the different titles they serve under and who they work for underneath those titles. A lot of times you hear the terminology state active duty. So state action duty can only fall under the Title 32 because they're under the command and control of the governor. Under state active duty, those are total different types of benefits 
from their federal benefits. So they're actually working under the state of duty authority. They're actually a state employee. They're not a federal employee. So the federal benefits they would normally get serving on drill weekends, such as military credit, if they got hurt, you know, they can submit a LOD for that injury. Well, when they serve under the state active duty, Army National Guard soldiers are state employees, so their benefits are works from comp, no military credit, no military benefits, unless you hear the terminology now, 502F. 502F, Title 32, is when the president makes it a national emergency, and then now these soldiers can serve under the federal authority of Title 32 and receive all their federal benefits as if they were O'Connor's or serving on drill weekend or at their annual training. And that's a great benefit to our Army Guard soldiers. So is that what they're under now, Sergeant Major? A lot of them are under the federal 502F, and some of them are still on active duty. So it all depends on if the state files for the 502F and if that state is deemed as a national emergency. But a lot of the soldiers are, are getting ready to fall under the 502F that the president signed. Wow. Well. Yeah. Well, let's change the subject a little bit, Sergeant Major, if you don't mind. Still related, obviously, but something that our soldiers are you know, very much wanting to know information about. So for our listeners out there who are soldiers, the Army Combat Fitness Test was in the middle of its rollout and diagnostic testing when the COVID-19 started to spread. What is the status of the ACFT and what guidance would you give your soldiers to maintain and improve their physical readiness at home during this time? Well, last week, headquarters of the DA issued a Fraggle 16. And Fraggle 16 gives guidance for physical fitness training and activities. So, you know, the COVID-19 mitigation measures are affecting normal physical training environments with respect to, you know, social distancing during the group or unit physical training and testing. And surface contact, most common fitness equipment and apparatus for training. So, as a result, the APFT testing frequency standards for all compos is temporarily suspended until further notice. So what I mean by that is that all current valid passing APFT scores are extended until further notice. So if a Army National Guard soldier or, well, any soldier, because we say this applies for all three compos, active duty, Army National Guard, and United States Army Reserve. If a soldier had a current APFT score, that score remains in effect until further notice. Also, a passing height and weight is valid for the use of the APFT and APFT prerequisites for PME, for enlisted and officers, functional courses, operational courses, credit consideration, or distant learning. So again, the so what to all this is that if you had a current APFT as of today, it's still in effect and it will not expire until further notice. Now, if you didn't have a passing current APFT, you're going to remain not having a current APFT until you actually have a valid one. So some soldiers could be affected by that because they may not have that current APFT. So that's why it's important that every soldier always maintain their physical fitness, current APFT for situations like this. Absolutely. Now, now this isn't going to go away, though, right? I mean, soldiers should continue to train by themselves and maintaining social distance policies for the ACFT? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. So, you know, there are some questions asked, you know, will the ACFT become the test of record on October 2020 as scheduled? And the APFT testing standards and the ACFT diagnostic test standards requirements are suspended until further notice. So, again, all that has stopped. What soldiers need to focus on is maintaining their individual readiness as they have in the past, but maintaining their social distancing and everything else, you know, that's come up since the COVID-19. But soldiers should never lose focus or never stop their physical fitness training. There's all type of information out there to do, APFT training, ACFT training. You don't need to go to the gym for ACFT training. There's other alternate exercises that you can do to help you prepare for the ACFT. But you know, this is not a unique thing for the Army National Guard soldiers because again, we're all part-time soldiers. They have to maintain their physical fitness level all the time. So having individual training for them at home is nothing new to them because they still have to maintain the Army standards no matter what, even though they train once a month, they still have to maintain that standard. And so for a lot of our National Guard soldiers, they understand this, that 
uh, this is still part of their battle rhythm. It has not changed their battle rhythm when it comes to physical fitness because, again, they do it from month to month, day to day. They know what the requirements are and they know how to get out the training. But my point this morning is that even though the physical fitness, APFT testing and APFT testing and diagnostic testing have been suspended until further notice, don't stop training. Continue to train. Yeah, that's part of just maintaining your personal health, too. And you're right, our National Guard soldiers have to get after that every day, even though they only drill maybe once a month. And it's important that they do that. So I want to switch right. subjects again on you, Sergeant Major. There seems to be a concern among all of our soldiers, but also our Guard members about how COVID-19 will affect promotions and professional military education. What has the Guard done to ensure COVID-19 does not negatively impact career progression for our NCOs and soldiers out there? Well, based on the Army G1 guidance, the Army National Guard also put out a policy that pretty much mirrors what the headquarters DAG1 guidance is. But of course, you know, our promotion system in the Army National Guard is, is somewhat different than the regular Army. So the Army National Guard produced a policy to, in other words, to help soldiers, not penalize soldiers who were scheduled for school and could not attend school because of the COVID-19 response and a no movement order. So what that policy states is that if a soldier was scheduled to go to school, a resident phase school, that was their soldier's last phase for promotion. In other words, when that soldier graduated, he or she immediately met the pin-on requirement for promotion. That soldier will be afforded the promotion that he or she deserved, but was not able to go to school. So they're going to be immediately promoted and be rescheduled to a later date for that PME. So in the Army National Guard, it already kind of falls in line how we send soldiers to school following the STEP program. So as you're well aware with the STEP, we select a soldier, and then that soldier is put into that paragraph and line number because the Army National Guard promote on vacancy. We're a vacancy-based promotion organization. So that soldier is put into a paragraph and line number for that higher grade position. Now, that soldier would not be promoted until he or she is trained and educated through their PME. Now, for an Army National Guard, for a soldier to complete BLC, they have one year to get that BLC completed before they are taken out of that slot or become a legacy soldier. E6 and above, those soldiers have up to 24 months to complete all phases of their PME before they become a legacy soldier. So we're still following the STEP program. Even though we are promoting the soldiers immediately, but they still have to complete their PME before they're considered fully promoted. So a lot of questions that came up is that, so when do that clock start? When does that one-year clock start? When does that 24-month, two-year clock start? That clock would start when the no-movement order is lifted, because at that point, soldiers can get rescheduled and move out to their particular schoolhouse in order to get that training. And so right now, we're looking at May 11 for that no movement order to be lifted. But again, that possibly could change as well, depending on what the health risk to the nation. So again, right now, if a soldier was scheduled to go to school during this time period, and he or she was not able to go to school, as long as they had a passing APFT, passing height and weight, met all the other promotion criteria, the only thing that kept them from being promoted was the school. They're being promoted. But then they have to complete their PME along that way. So there's only those soldiers in that particular. We got a targeted amount of soldiers that we're targeting, and that's in this time period. So. Well, that's good news for our soldiers out there. That they will get promoted, but they're going to have to go to school after all this shakes out. And it will. I know it will. Yeah, you're right, because, again, we don't want to diminish any type of military education. It's important. And so we have to make those adjustments because that training is important for that soldier's career professional development that he or she's going to need later in their career. So we cannot really take away from that soldier because if we do that, and as you all know, you're taking some skill set, some education that that soldier is going to be able to learn in those schoolhouses that they'll never get and could diminish their progression as an outstanding leader. And so, uh, again, what we're doing to not negatively impact that progression of that NCO's career. So, again, stay ready. You're going to be promoted. But you still have to get to that school, so make sure you prepare for that. That's good. Well, let's switch subjects again, Sergeant so Major, and talk something about what are the things our soldiers are doing out there. So you have the opportunity to see and 
talk with thousands of soldiers and leaders each week. And many of these soldiers and leaders are doing some really incredible things for our army and our nation. What is the most inspiring thing that you've seen or one of the inspiring things that you've seen so far while responding to this virus? Well, I haven't seen a whole bunch in a sense other than the reports that I get from the states on a weekly basis and what I see on TV because I too am restricted from any movement in a sense because my movement is limited. I can't get out like I want to. You know how we used to go out and look at training and talk to soldiers and all that. Well, I also have to limit my movement as well too because I could too be one, exposed to the coronavirus by being out and two, pass along to somebody else. But some of the things that I saw and have been reported to me is that the continuation of how Army National Guard soldiers deploy in their state and the response that they provide, the support they provide, the dedicated law of service they provide to their state and local communities in all facets, as I just talked about earlier, you know, doing humanitarian aid support, traffic control, supporting the testing sites and setting up beds and setting up hospitals. And that's the strength of the Guard. That's the strength of the Army National Guard is we bring our civilian skill sets to whatever that situation is and make it a much better because a lot of these folks have this expertise in logistical planning and setting up stuff, moving heavy equipment, driving trucks and all that on a daily basis. And you put all this together and it makes for an awesome, awesome response. You know, I continue to tell the story to a lot of folks that you always tell when you was at Fourth ID, Command Sergeant Major, when you was deployed and how you got that specialist to get that water treatment plant working together there that was down. That's the strength of the Guard, how we respond to the community, because a lot of them join the Guard because they want to serve in the Army. But then, too, the bottom line is that they want to serve their community. They want to serve something bigger than themselves. And that's why when Guard soldiers are called to duty, they call and they're enthusiastic, they're ready to go, and they don't care about the number of hours they're working. They just care about their communities and getting it back on track. So that's some of the unique things with the Army National Guard, and that's why I'm proud to be a Guardsman and proud to serve, be the leader of those Guardsmen, because the things they're doing, the sacrifice they're making for their communities and their states. You're right, Sergeant Major. We are so incredibly blessed that we have these young men and women who volunteer, as you said, to take off uh, their civilian clothes or work clothes and put on the uniform whenever they're called to and dedicate their entire selves and their lives to whatever cause it is, what may be a natural disaster or a pandemic. And this is something our guard soldiers are not new to. And as you alluded to, they bring their unique skill sets of both being professionals as a soldier, as well as from their civilian occupation to the fight. That's correct. Yeah. And, and a lot of them, you know, they have a civilian life as well, too. So a lot of these guard soldiers out there working don't even have a civilian job right now. And they files, you know, don't have a civilian job because a lot of these civilian employees have closed doors. And so they're out there you know, doing the service of their community, of their state, and then have to fall back on whatever that is when they get back home. But again, it's just a humanitarian that we have in our guard, in our formation, and as a nation as well, too, because again, all soldiers serve with dedication, Lord, not only to their nation, but their state as well, too. Absolutely, Sergeant Major. You said something that really sparked interest, and I know it was a big concern, because this virus has had a huge impact on our nation preventing a lot of people from going to work. So as our National Guard soldiers are out there doing incredible things for our nation, like you mentioned, some of them might not be able to go to their civilian occupation and maybe their spouses too. So is there anything out there that our soldiers, our National Guard soldiers can seek for things like financial assistance during this period? They need it? Yes. Yeah, so with this whole COVID response, it's been a national response. Uh, everybody has made adjustments. So even your banks and credit unions and credit card companies, They've all made adjustments. And so, you know, you got banks and credit unions providing no interest loans and stuff like that. You have a number of local and national foundation charities offering grants to service members and their families. And then you have automobile financial institutions, their extensions to payments and stuff like that. And so I encourage each and every soldier to contact their particular bank, credit union creditors, insurance companies and apply for these extensions that they're providing based on this whole COVID-19. Like I said, there's other charitable organizations and foundations actually giving grants 
the service members as well, too. We here in my office are feeding a lot of that information down to the family readiness group and state family programs. So contact their family state program, family readiness group for their particular state, and they can get a lot of information because a lot of things could be tailored to that particular state or as a nation as well, too. So I want to direct those soldiers to those family program office and their family readiness groups to get more information about that. But bottom line, contact your bank, contact your credit union, contact your credit card companies, and apply for those extensions to give you some relief financially. Utility companies well, too. There's no light being cut off, no water being cut off. But again, contact these companies, and they have people on staff to give you those extensions. And it is incredible how this nation has come together to help fight this cause and and our guard soldiers are out there. So I agree with you. Take advantage of the opportunities that are being afforded to you because this is nobody's fault and everybody understands it. I also want to, you know, put out to the soldiers what it also goes back to some self accountability as well, too. And so just like the whole nation had to, you know, reevaluate some things, offer some new things. I ask that each soldier do some self evaluation as far as the extras in your house. Determine what you can do without doing this crisis to help your financial needs. May not have to have cable for the month or two months, or maybe need two phones instead of three phones and stuff like that. So do some self-accountability as well, too, uh, to help with their financial uh, situation as well. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, that's a good segue to my next question, Sergeant Major. So what are the, some of the things that our soldiers can do during this time to further develop themselves and help maintain their individual readiness, their personal and professional development or growth? One thing they can do, SMA retired daily, is they can listen to AUSA podcasts as they listen yeah. to right now to get information. But other podcasts such as this type to get more information, updates on everything as well. You know, they can always go to AKO. Click on the training tab on the AKO webpage, and there's an abundance of training information there for the soldiers to continue the professional development while they're at home. And then again, go to the AUSA and English websites, and there's all type of information that they can get because each of those organizations put out information for soldiers to continue to educate themselves, stay up to date on the current situation, thing that's going on around the world and going on with today's Army. There's a lot of resources out there for them to continue their professional development while they're at home, if they're at home. Because like I say, there's over 16,000 Army National Guard soldiers right now in the fight. But if they're one of the ones who have been called to duty yet, they can continue their education by the things we just talked about. Well, that's great. Sergeant Major Sam, it's always a pleasure to have you with us. And I'd like to give you the last words. But before I do that, I also like to point out that you mentioned several times throughout this interview that our National Guard soldiers have also full-time jobs um, as civilians. So I just want to mention the fact that I am personally very proud of that Command Sergeant Major John Sampa is a lifetime law enforcement officer in the state of Texas. So, John, thank you for your double service to this nation and to the great people of Texas. And thank you for the work that you're doing for our National Guard soldiers and the work that you've done for the state of Texas, protecting the peace. So what I'd like to do now is give you any final thoughts and the last words, Sergeant Major, to our listeners out there and something that you'd like to share with them today. Sure. I'd like to thank you and AUSA for allowing me to come on and be part of this podcast today to continue to update our soldiers on the current fight with the COVID-19 response and provide some things that they can go to for their training, their continued training, individual training, and so to speak, because a lot of the, their training has been either postponed or rescheduled and stuff like that. But again, I am proud to be the Command Sergeant Major of the Army National Guard, leading the soldiers that's out there in the COVID-19 response. Because Every time there is a homeland response, our Army National Guard is there. That's why there is always the logo you see, always ready, always there, because we are. So on behalf of Lieutenant General Daniel Hokerson, the Director of the Army National Guard, Command Chief Teresa Dolmeyer, the Command Chief of the Army National Guard, and myself, Command Sergeant Major Sample, the 12th Command Sergeant Major of the National Guard, I'd like to thank each and every Army National Guard soldier and their family. Because without the support of their families, as everyone as well know that he or she can do their job. So I'd like to thank the soldier and their family for the loyal and dedicated service that they're providing to their respective state and their community. Because they're needed. We are needed. And we will get through this COVID-19 as we get through anything else. I just encourage each and every one to do their part as 
far as practicing the CDC guidelines, as far as social distancing, as well as staying at home, if possible, to reduce the spread of the COVID-19, not only to family members, but to your friends and to the force itself. Because without the people in the Army National Guard, without the soldiers in the Army National Guard, without the soldiers in today's Army, we have no force. So we have to protect our force. And so I ask that each and every one of the Army National Guard or each and every soldier of the Army follow those guidelines. And so, again, thank you, SMA Retired Daily, for allowing me to be part of the podcast today. And I look forward to many more in the future to come. Thank you, Sergeant Major, and we look forward to having you on in the future, and we'd be welcome you to give us an update sometime when you're ready here in the near future again on what our National Guard soldiers are doing and what they can do to protect themselves. So our time has come to an end to close this edition of Soldier Podcast today. All of us here at the Association of the United States Army want to thank Command Sergeant Major John Sampa for joining us today for this great update on our Army National Guard and COVID-19. As an Army alums, I can say from all of us across the country, thank you. Thank you to all of our soldiers and all the leaders of the National Guard for what you continue to do for our citizens. Every community across the country has been touched by our Army National Guard. And thank you for continuing the proud traditions of our Army that makes us the greatest land power force in the world. To all our listeners, thanks for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to the Army Matters Podcast on iTunes and everywhere podcasts are found. The Army Matters Podcast series is brought to you by the Association of the United States Army. The U.S. Army's Professional Association. Member supported, Army connected. Visit us at AUSA.org for more information or to become a member. Your membership helps AUSA continue to carry out its mission to educate, inform, and connect with the total Army, our industry partners, and our supporters of a strong national defense. For questions or to provide topic recommendations, email us at podcast at AUSA.org. Have a great Army day. Hua.